Hey guys, Vidsplode here with an all new tutorial, and in this tutorial I'm going to be teaching you how to do the headshot effect seen in the previous clip. Now, as you can see, I have it already brought up right here, and so I'm just going to go frame by frame to show you what it actually looks like. So, here we go. So that's what the effect actually looks like in really slow motion. It looks pretty cool, I've got to say. And so, we're going to teach you pretty much exactly how to do this in as little time as possible. So, first thing we're going to do is go composition, new composition, and I'm going to call it headshot tutorial. Now you're going to need to go file, import, file, and find your clips. Now, I have created and it will be in the link in the description, but it'll be a zip file called Headshot Project Files, and in it you'll find the base footage and some free stock footage that I'm including. So, in the Headshot base footage, instead of doing anything like that, you're going to go to the folder Headshot Project Files, so go to it in your browser, locate it, and then click Import Folder. So that'll import the entire Headshot Project Files folder. Now we're going to drag the headshot base footage onto the timeline. Now let's go out to the spot where we're going to go to the spot right before I'm actually in the shot. So let's go frame by frame. Right about there should be good. So hit B to set the beginning point, and then go out to about the end, and then hit N to set the end points. Now we're going to go composition, trim comp to work area, and that will trim up your composition so that it's just as long as you need it to be. So here's what the clip looks like so far. It's just a really quick run through of me running and then getting, acting like I'm getting hit by a bullet or something. So now we're going to need to work on mapping my head out so that we can remove it from the shot entirely. So what we're going to do is a process called rotoscoping using masks in After Effects. So we're going to go to the first frame back here and hit Control D to duplicate the footage. Then right click and say Time freeze frame, and that'll give you the top layer will freeze frame completely. Now we're going to hit the I to make the top layer go away so that we just have the bottom layer to work with. Now we're going to lock the bottom layer so we don't actually hurt it in any way, and wait until I run out, and then right about there looks like a good spot to start. So we're going to start removing my head at this point. Hit Control shift d to split the footage, and then we're going to delete this back part. Now you can go forward until the very end, and as you can see, my head disappears behind my jacket. And so we're going to go up until it's completely gone, which would be right there. Now, once again, Control Shift D. So now we have one segment where if we turn on the eye again, you can see that it just deletes. So there it's deleted and then it goes to that spot. So now we're going to go into masking. So on the first frame we're going to go up to my head and we're going to click the pen tool and create a small hole in my head. So just draw it really raggedy like this because it is a bullet hole so it's not going to be very circle-ish. And the more keyframes you put in there the better. Now we can, once again, turn back on the eye, and as you can see, as soon as you turn back on the eye, a hole in my head just appears. But as you can see, this hole is way too sharp. I mean, you wouldn't think it would look like that. So what we're going to do is click on the layer and hit F to bring up the mask feather, and we'll set that to around 5. So as you can see, we have a much better hole here. 
So now we're going to go and hit P, or actually M, to bring up the mask path. And hit a keyframe right there. Now we can go forward one frame, and we're going to move this mask down to be in the center of my head again. And now we're going to resize it so that it's a little bit bigger. So as you can see, just maintain that raggedy shape. But you're actually going to be making it a lot bigger than it was originally. Alright, so now that the hole's gotten bigger, this is what it looks like. So now the third frame, the third keyframe, we're going to drag to select all these points and drag it down to the center of my head again. And now we're going to move it so that it's so big that there's only little portions of my head left. And remember to leave my neck because my neck is one of the, uh, you don't want my head to completely disappear. You want to leave some of my neck so that it looks like it's kind of like floating there in space. So as you can see, we're expanding the mask to where there's only little pieces of my head left. Like that. So now, without the mask, you can see that it looks pretty good so far. It's a nice big development as we remove it. So now we're going to cover the entire head with this very last mask. So about, about three or four frames in, we're going to cover the entire head. So drag the mask out so that it covers my entire head, but make sure to leave my neck. This is a long and arduous process. And so uh, now that we've gotten this up to this point, I'm going to let, I'm going to skip ahead until I finish this as to not take up too much time, but pretty much what we're going to do from this point on is we're just going to animate it to keep it where it's tracking onto my head. So as you can see, it does that, but then we need it as it goes through the video to stay on my head. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now you can see that we've gotten to this very end point, and I'm on the very last frame, and my foot has come and interacted with the mask. So we're going to drag away so that my foot doesn't touch the mask. So now if we watch this after locking the layer, we'll see that it looks pretty good. So just a nice little three frame envelop right there. And then the fall should be perfect. So, after masking out the head, we can now go directly into the blood effects. And you'll notice that in the project files, I included a folder that says free stock footage, and it has different stock footage that I'm including with this video that you can use to um, just get all the effects if you don't have a good stock footage source. So, so let's do blood three. And you can just watch each one to make sure which one actually fits with your footage at the moment. So this one looks good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start, and as you can see on the first frame, when I go to the second frame, it's the same as the first frame. So we're going to cut off the first frame and move it back. So now what we're going to do is take it and position it right where my head hole appears. So right about like that. And don't worry, we'll make this uh, look better right here in, in just a second. But right now, that's basically what we're going for. So now we're going to click it and hit P for position. We're going to click a keyframe there. Now we're going to drag forward until you can tell that almost all the blood has fallen off of the little screen. And then we're going to drag it down here. We're going to have a keyframe there. And now we're going to go back to the middle of it, as you can see, and drag this out. Now you can edit your Beezer curves to make the blood fall in a more realistic fashion and edit this little keyframe down here. So now we have a nice curve to the blood as it falls down because blood doesn't just float there, it falls with gravity. 
but as you can see, the blood looks more like it's kind of just jumping around. It doesn't look like it's actually falling with the video. So what we have to do is click a little motion blur slot here. Then not only do you have to click it there, but you also have to click it up here where the composition is. And what that'll do is it'll activate motion blur for the entire composition and allow you to make everything meld and look like it's actually moving inside of the video. There we go. So that's the first blood, and we're going to do the same thing for the next few bloods. So I'll check back as soon as I'm done with the next two. Alright, so I've gotten the other two blood hits all put in here, and added motion blur and animated each one of them. And the best way to actually put the blood hits to make it look like the back of the head's being blown open is to use them in three different orientations. One of them pointing to this side, and it'll be animated, obviously, to fall to the same side that it's pointing. The second blood hit should be pointing to the other side, and this blood hit will also be animated to fall to the side that it's pointing. And the third blood hit, you should animate to where it's pointing to the top, and then it falls straight down after being animated to the top, like that. And so once you put them all together, it looks like a nice big head explosion hit thing. So now that we've got that, let's add something to blend all these together, because they still don't look too good. So we're going to go project and insert this blood at camera that I included. We're going to drop that in on top of there. Now you may have asked, you may ask why we didn't do this in the first place, and the reason is is that this blood at camera is not enough blood, so you have to add this blood yourself. So once again, wait for it to almost fall off after setting a keyframe for the position. There you go. So it's almost all off right there. And we'll animate this out. There needs to be a little bit more to this side. Or maybe it should be animated to the other side. Yeah, I like that. All right. And then a small little beezer curve. There we go. Make sure to enable motion blur. And so that'll help blend all of the blood hits together. So now that you have a big dump of blood coming out the back of the head, we're going to now go to a decapitation. We're going to drag that in. And so what this is, is the same as the other one, except this one looks more like a decapitation from what I've found. So what we're going to do is take it and rotate it sideways. Maybe scale it down a bit. And after scaling that down, we should be able to drop it right in where his neck is. And so we're going to go until it's just a neck, which you can see right here it is. And we're going to drop this underneath all the other bloods. And we're going to move it in to position it to the neck and make sure that it starts where the neck is showing. So this one isn't going to start until the neck is showing. And it should be placed underneath all of the other blood hits. So now we're going to reduce the size of it just a bit. And drop it right on top of there. So now as we watch it explodes like a neck getting cut off. So now we're going to hit position and animate it to follow my neck. So right about here, we're going to drag that down to follow the neck. Make sure to enable motion blur. There you go. So as you can see, After Effects is tweening to make it smoother. There we go. So once again, it pretty much mostly follows my neck. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect as long as it looks about right. 
and that it's more. And then now that we've gotten it mostly until I've fallen over, we're going to go to the end once again and drag it out of frame. And then out of Beezer Curve. So one more little Beezer Warp here. It's going to be an extreme one. There we go. And that's how you add in the main blood hits. So as you can see, the decapitation kind of follows the neck down mostly. Right there. And then as it falls, the blood just falls off the screen. Alright, so now that we've got most of the blood done, we're going to insert something that once again will just be there to help with blending all of the blood hits together. So I have an explosion, and we're going to drop that in at the very top. That's just a little white explosion, and I'm pretty sure the first two frames, once again, like almost every other of them, have been the same. So now what we're going to do is we're going to position it in. It's a little bit smaller. But as you'll notice, it's white, not blood colored. So we're going to right click and say Effect Color Correction Tint. And what that will turn it into is a black and white image. And now you're going to map the white to red and make it a little darker red. There you go. So now you've mapped it to a dark red. And as you can see, as we go frame by frame, it looks pretty good. We have the powder hit, we have the explosion, all of that in there. And you can position the explosion to how you think it needs to be, but this will all just tie into that. And I think I'm going to put a keyframe for scale, and I'm going to make it really small at the very first frame. And then on the second frame, we'll make it nice and big. There you go. So that is the most part of this tutorial. Now we're going to do one last thing to make sure that the video looks amazing. As you can see in this one, it looks completely different because I added some color corrections. So we're going to do that here. Let's right click and go New, Adjustment Layer. And we're going to right click on that, Effect, Color Correction, Curves. Now we're going to bring down here by the shadows and highlights. We're going to bring that down to bring out those shadows and highlights. And now we're going to go to green. Let's mess around with this. Uh, that's making the footage too green. So instead of messing with the green, let's mess with the blue. When you mess with the blue, you should be able to make a nice, interesting piece. So remember, that's all you have to do is mess around with the uh, curves until it looks cool. There we go. That looks about right. And so after messing around with the curves on the adjustment layer, our final footage should look like this. I run in like that. And then after running in, of course, we get a nice little hit right about here. And so that hit just is what we did.